Welcome to Electron Online. In this example, we see that there are a lot of similarities to the previous example, except that both F1 and F2 are no longer acting perpendicular to the length of the beam. They now are acting on the beam with an angle relative to the perpendicular. So we still follow the same principle, but we now have to take into account the two angles as well. Again, we can say that torque, the net torque on this, and that's what we're trying to find, the net torque, so torque net is equal to question mark, and it's simply going to be the sum of torque one plus torque two. But again, since we're adding torques here, we do have to take, in, take into consider, to consideration which direction they act and whether or not they're positive or negative. Notice that F1, if this was the only force acting on the beam, would cause the beam to rotate in a counterclockwise direction, which makes this a positive torque, or I would say that F1 will cause a positive torque to exist. And F2 would, if this was the only force acting on the, uh, on the beam, this was not there, this would cause the beam to rotate in a clockwise direction, this would therefore cause this to have a negative torque. So when we add them together, we get the following. The net torque is equal to the torque caused by force one, which is going to be positive. We're going to multiply the force times the distance from the pivot point to where the force is acting, which is L over two, times the cosine of the angle between the perpendicular and the direction of the force. In this case, that would be the cosine of theta sub one minus, because this will cause a negative torque to exist, minus the force, and of course I should say force one here, minus the force, which is F2, times the distance from the pivot point to where the force is acting, which is uh, times the L, the full length of the beam, times the cosine of the angle between the perpendicular and the direction of the force, which is the cosine of theta sub two. All we have to do now is plug in the numbers. And we get F1, which is 40 newtons, times the length of the beam, two meters divided by two, times the cosine of theta one, which is the cosine of 20 degrees, minus F2, which is 30 newtons, times the length of the beam, the length of the beam is two meters, times the cosine of the angle, which in this case is 30 degrees. All right, let's see what we get. The cosine of 20 is 0.94, basically. We multiply it times 40, and we get 37.6 newtons. This is a positive 37.6 newton meters. Minus, when we calculate that, minus, we get the cosine of 30 times 60, and we get a minus 52.0 newtons. So 52.0 minus 37.6, and we get a negative 14.4 newton meters, which is the net torque. Now notice what does a negative sign indicate? Well, negative means that we have a clockwise torque. Both these forces acting together still cause a clockwise torque. It's clockwise, therefore it's a negative torque, therefore it acts into the board. So here we do want to take into account that it's a clockwise torque and that the net torque is negative relative to the direction of the torque. And that's how it's done.